Wow, this is massive and so shiny. <laughs> hey there. I bet you're wondering why I'm standing in front of what looks like some kind of giant golden honeycomb mirror. Well, this is the James Webb Space Telescope. And in this week's mission briefing, you're going to learn what makes it so amazing. Last week, you learned about NASA's crawlers. You know, those vehicles that were the size of a baseball field. Well, right now, you're looking at a telescope that is three stories high and the size of a tennis court. And that giant mirror, it really is coated in gold, but the layer is so thin that if you rolled it into a ball, it would only be about the mass of a golf ball, and it would have the volume of a marble. Oh man, there are so many incredible things about this telescope. I don't know where to start. What do I tell them about first? Uh, okay, Kyle, it's going to be fine. Just start at the beginning. <laughs> All right, I was born on a cold December, no, Sorry, that's my beginning. Okay, this telescope is the largest, most powerful, and complex space science telescope ever built, and it's going to completely change the way we understand the universe. With this telescope, we'll be able to see farther into space than ever before, far enough to detect some of the very first galaxies in the universe, whose light has taken more than 13.5 billion years to reach us. Let's check out a video to learn a little bit more. This is your telescope, an engineering marvel, an exploration powerhouse. Use it to look back in time and explore the first galaxies that formed after the Big Bang, to peer into atmospheres of planets orbiting the stars. It's your eyepiece to the uncharted, unknown, and unimagined. This is the largest, most complex, and challenging space telescope ever constructed. It will change our understanding of the universe and our place in it. The James Webb Space Telescope. Equipped with the largest primary mirror ever to be flown in space at six and a half meters, it's more than six times the size of the Hubble Space Telescope primary mirror. Webb's four cutting edge infrared instruments and cameras operate at super cold temperatures. Temperatures colder than the surface of Pluto. Webb will be the first telescope to detect light from the most distant galaxies in the universe. These first galaxies formed about 13 and a half billion years ago, only 300 or so million years after the Big Bang. Webb carries advanced technologies to tackle some of the most fundamental questions about the universe. How did the first galaxies form and evolve? Are there chemical signatures of the building blocks of life on other worlds? Is our solar system unique? So let's just get this straight. This telescope is almost like a time machine. It's going to capture light that's been traveling across space for as long as 13.5 billion years. It doesn't get much cooler than that. Why don't we check out a few more fun facts? Webb will launch on December 2021 from French Guiana. Webb's mission lifetime is 5 to 10 plus years. In addition to observing planets, asteroids, and comets inside our own solar system, Webb will tell us more about the atmospheres of planets orbiting other stars. Webb will orbit the Sun a million miles away from Earth, at the place called the second Lagrange point, four times further away than the Moon. Webb's 18-segment primary mirror is over six times bigger in area than Hubble's. Webb will be the largest telescope ever placed in space, 100 times more powerful than Hubble. So big, it has to fold origami-style to fit in the rocket and will unfold like a transformer in space. Webb's 18 primary mirror segments will each be individually adjusted to work as one massive mirror. Their gold covering, which optimizes them for reflecting infrared light, is so thin that a human hair is 1,000 times thicker. Webb will be so sensitive, it could detect the heat signature of a bumblebee at the distance of the moon, and can see details the size of a U.S. penny at the distance of about 40 kilometers. 
Thousands of scientists, engineers, and technicians from 14 countries and 29 U.S. states have taken part in designing and building Webb. So I'm thinking you'd all like to hear about how this telescope was built and what kind of scientific questions it will help us answer. Good news! I have a friend here that worked on the Webb mission and she's going to tell you all about it. Thanks, Kyle. I am Nicole Cologne and I am the Deputy Project Scientist for Exoplanet Science for the James Webb Space Telescope. My role on the mission is to help the Webb Telescope look at exoplanets and make sure it's ready to study exoplanets and study their atmospheres in particular. What exoplanets are, are planets that orbit distant stars. We have eight major planets in our solar system that orbit the sun. However, we know of thousands of exoplanets that orbit distant stars. And we can study them with space telescopes, like the Hubble Space Telescope and the Webb Space Telescope. Webb is going to be so advanced, the most advanced space telescope that we've ever launched. We will be able to look at atmospheric signals that are very tiny. Because if you imagine a planet that has an atmosphere, the layer of the atmosphere that surrounds the planet is very thin. But with Webb, we can see those details and dig into the composition, the structure of that atmosphere. We can look and see whether there's water in the atmosphere or methane or carbon dioxide. And some of these molecules are the building blocks of life. Webb is going to unfold in space in such a way that we can then use it to study distant exoplanets and distant stars and distant galaxies. How Webb works is that it has different mirror segments. There are 18 different mirrors that come together to act as a single giant mirror that is six and a half meters in diameter. So once Webb launches, we have to align all the individual mirrors so that they can serve and be in focus together as a single mirror. Not only that, but Webb has a giant tennis court size sun shield that actually looks like really thin pieces of aluminum foil, but it's designed to protect Webb from heat because Webb wants to detect distant heat signatures from distant planets and stars and galaxies. So we have to make sure that Webb itself is kept cold. One really cool thing about a space telescope like Webb is that we can basically use it like a time machine. So when we're looking at everything from distant exoplanets to stars to galaxies, we're actually looking at the light that has traveled many years to get to our telescope. And when we're looking at the earliest galaxies and stars, that's light that has actually traveled over 13 and a half billion years to get to us. So that is looking towards the beginning of the universe. And in that way, that's how we have a telescope like Webb serving as a time machine. Before any of those things can happen and the telescope can get off the ground, it had to go through extensive testing to make sure it could handle the stress of launch. Let me show you. This is the optical and science segment of the Webb Space Telescope in one of the largest clean rooms in the world at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland. This half of the observatory element successfully passed a series of rigorous vibration and acoustic tests to ensure Webb's optics and science instruments can handle the stresses of launch. See what I mean? Just like Artemis, there are a lot of things that have to happen before the telescope can start its journey into space. This has been really fun, and I'm so excited about all the cool things that you and all the folks at home are doing. Good luck on your next missions.
It's always amazing to see the level of teamwork and precision it takes to make sure everything goes according to plan with these missions. And did you hear what this telescope is capable of? I can't even imagine all the incredible things we're going to learn once it's gazing out into the universe for us. You know, this may be able to look billions of years into the past, but I know someone who can give us a look into the future right now. Hey, Dr. Jenny, how about telling us a little bit about what we have to look forward to for the next couple of weeks? Hi, Kyle. It's so great to be back. And wow, I have to say, listening to Nicole, this new telescope sounds incredible. Can you imagine how many amazing new things that we're going to learn once it's up and running? I can't wait to get a look at some of those exoplanets that are out there in deep space. It's going to be awesome. Speaking of awesome, the designs you and our friends at home came up with for the second set of missions are, well, as Zach would say when he's on his surfboard, totally radical. But don't take my word for it. Let's check them out. What did I tell you? Amazing stuff, right? If you guys keep this up, you're gonna start getting job offers. We better get you through the last set of training missions first. Now, the next two weeks are all about working in space. We're gonna start off with a look at how safety is critical to the success of any space mission. The safety and mission assurance team, they make sure that every stage of the entire mission is safe for everyone that's involved. This process starts before the rocket hits the launch pad, but it continues long after our spacecraft is in orbit. Wait until you see some of the stuff they do to keep our astronauts safe. But you know, maybe you're wondering what type of work astronauts do in space. Well, this module, it's all about the science. I don't just mean research and experiments. We're talking about the tools and equipment that astronauts use to make all of it happen. How about a sneak peek of the action? It's going to be a fun couple of weeks. Let's kick things off right now with your last mini mission. Okay, start by thinking about what it would be like to work in space. 
What kind of tasks do you think astronauts do while they're on a space flight? What do you think might make it different or even more difficult than working here on Earth? I want you to think about some ways astronauts might overcome these challenges that they face. So it's time to do a little research. Grab your engineering design notebook. We're going to hit the library. Okay, or we can use the internet. But let's find out what some of the barriers are to working in space and what kind of things NASA does to overcome them. I want you to write down everything along the way with your thoughts on how easy or hard you think it would be if you worked in space. I hope this gets you really fired up for the exciting things coming in these last couple of weeks of Build to Launch. I'm gonna see you back here for the final mission call to celebrate all the awesome work that you've been doing. Good luck on your missions. I'll see you real soon. Speaking of research, I wonder if I could do some research on getting one of those working from space jobs. I really need to find out about that. Thanks, Dr. Jenny. So, are you ready to accept the next set of missions and to keep on building to launch? Keep that awesome work coming, and don't forget to join the discussion on the LEGO Education community and post on social media with hashtag build to launch See you soon!